No. I didn't even know that was him. <laughs> Just met it just now. And uh <laughs> Wow, that made ten thousand jokes crash at the middle of my forehead just now. Uh, uh, but I was uh as I was trying to get used to the balance, it was that part where I go, uh just waiting for the play. And all of a sudden I was trying to get the guitar to go right, and I started being like Waiting for the planes, I sort of was like going Jim Morrison and all that shit. That was pretty cool. Just waiting for the planes. Just going, hey, Jim Morrison fans in my house tonight. Oh, yeah? Oh, cool. Yeah, I know I'm a huge Doors fan. I love everything about The Doors. I love the movie by Oliver Stone, cleverly entitled The Doors. Yeah. When's your movie coming out, Lash? Val Kilmer as Jim Morrison. <laughs> I, I, when I picture the doors in my head now, I don't even picture Jim Morrison, I picture Val Kilmer. <laughs> uh, and what's more fucked up is that after he made the Doors movie, his next movie was Batman. He was the Batman after Jim Morrison. It makes me think what it would be like if uh, Jim Morrison <clears throat> was the Batman. 
Can somebody play like a more uh, a Dorsey guitar thing? And you want to do a Dorsey guitar thing for me? Sure. I'm gonna. I'm going with the flow, baby. Because <laughs> there's Jim Morrison fans out. Just give me like a bluesy well, Somebody thing. take some pictures. Uh, just do a bluesy, <laughs> yep. bluesy kind of. Give me a bluesy Dorsey thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so this is Jim Morrison as the Batman. This might go horribly wrong, people. But there's so much love in the house. So you got a picture of Jim. Yeah. 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 Crashes into giant fat. <laughs> One day, a boy grows up. Spirit of the bat fills his young fragile eggshell body. <laughs> and he goes to the bat. He puts on the bat mask. He puts on the bat cape. He puts on the bat belt. He puts on the bat boots and he walks on down the hallway. Till he gets to the butler's room. And he says, Alfred, yes, Bruce. I saw Robert Vescuzzi downstairs. He goes, Lash, Lash, man, I got five minutes. I, I worked out a bit just for tonight. You're gonna love it. And I'm like, he didn't talk about me like hardly at all during that bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any Hussick ever. Yeah. <laughs> now, one of the good things about being a New York songwriter in Scotland is you can do all the songs that everybody's heard a million times in this fucking place and they think it's a new song you just wrote. And I say fucking place with complete endearment. So this is a song some of you might have heard before, but I don't know if you've heard that Scotland's going for its independence. They're going yeah. for independence oh, over there. Yeah. And they've run this contest to uh, come up with the new Scottish national anthem. Uh, and my song I'm, I'm gonna do for you now is on the short list. Fudge! 
tricks. Keep on going until you're sick and tired of being sick. I ain't here to preach. I just hope you're okay. Lord seems out of reach. There's nothing better away. Teenage alcoholic. Teenage alcoholic. Hey, where are you? Come in from the cold. You get too old to be a Last time I saw you, you said how great things are. You got back into yourself, you started learning acoustic guitar. You're taking yoga, and you turned vegan. <laughs> so nice to see you've started. Smoking again, smoking again. Well, you're smoking again. You said all things improve when you and I split. You made a long list of what else you were gonna quit. You went for so jolly and so smug to seeing ya giving old Mr. Camel another tug and tell me how happy you are with that new boyfriend congratulations baby you are smoking again smoking again well you're smoking again a garden and uh, you didn't get to see it for two years and you come back it's just beautiful flowers everywhere. Aww. <laughs> Aww. It's like that. <laughs> Sorry. I'd like to uh, uh, raise a toast uh, to two people in particular tonight uh, who really really uh, I just would not be here right now and that's to Mr. Ben Krieger at the soundboard. Yeah. Yeah. And to Peeny. I love water, man. This is, I've, got, I've got only one OCD thing. This is my OCD thing. I gotta make that noise after I drink cold water, otherwise people die. It's great. Everybody makes that noise, but there's no word for that noise. Why the fuck isn't there a word for that? There's words for shit you never, ever see. But that noise, they don't have a word for it. 
<laughs> Actually, I have two OCD things. My other OCD thing is uh, when I fly, I uh, flew in from uh, Edinburgh uh, to play here on Virgin. Um, she wasn't a virgin by the time I landed, but, uh, hey, where's my rim shot? That'd be a cool name for a, a, a superhero, rim shot. Right, John? Rim shot. His power would be like, to turn anything into a bad joke, so like, the robber would be like, give me the money, I've got a gun, and rim shot would go, and everyone would just laugh at the robber, right? When you make money. Oh. What was I talking about? Oh, airplanes. So that's my other OCD thing is that when I give the ticket to the checkout person, you know, the check-in person, they take the ticket, they go on their computer, and then they hand you back the ticket, and 90% of the time they say, you're all set. 10% of the time they forget to say that. I don't get on the fucking airplane. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> Living proof, baby. <laughs> Should we do an old New York folk song? You seem, seem like you're in a uh, sing along yeah. mood today. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's do it. If you know this, just come on in, alright? I forgot the lyric. 
And that part was the part Gene Simmons wrote, so fuck it. Ah, his loves you. Um, I'm stopping the song right here because 99.9% .9 of the audience knows the song, it seems. And our KISS fans. <laughs> or, okay, they know the song. <laughs> but there's one person out there who doesn't understand the last three minutes that just happened. They don't understand what's going on in this song. So I think for their benefit, I need to educate them a little bit, Dan. I need to do the song again. <laughs> this time with footnotes. Paul Stanley, lead singer Kiss, dude with the star in his eye. Come on, Demon Child, last seen in Andrew Lloyd Webber's production of Phantom of the Opera in Toronto, but we don't need to talk about that. Put Paul Stanley on my bubblegum card and on my lunchbox in the schoolyard. All right, I did not actually have a Kiss lunchbox. I, I had a Davy Crockett American Frontiersman lunchbox. But I wanted a Kiss, I drew a star on Davy Crockett's eye. <laughs> Is it strange to rock so soon when I heard T-Rex and the T-Rex? Mark Bolin, inventor of glam rock. Without Mark Bolin, there would have never been Kiss. There'd never been Elton John, David Bowie, Lady Gaga, 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 Gaga. All right, Mark Bolin has a lot to fucking answer for, but he was cool. I'm getting high in the green bug. Me and my best friend, Doug. All right, his name was really Norman. <laughs> But you know, poetic license and shit. I don't I don't have a poetic license, I have a poetic learner's permit. <laughs> I can rhyme, but only when there's another poet in the room, you know. <laughs> and hi, I'm a green bug. I had to explain this line to uh, everyone in the UK. They didn't know what a green bug was. You all know, right? Yeah. Volkswagen yeah. Beetle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They advertised. Uh, when I was a teenager, they actually advertised that the Volkswagen Beetle was an airtight car. Yeah, do you remember the commercial where they drove it off a cliff and it floated in the water? Yeah, yeah. Who but a pothead would fucking care if a car is airtight, you know what I'm saying? That's why they sold millions of those things. Okay, hi, the green bug, me and my best friend, son. Is it strange, son? Uh, making bongs out of snorkel coats. Pretty soon every Yeah, one guy's like, yeah! <laughs> You know, snorkel coats like, you know, South Park Kenny. We figured out how to make a bong out of it. You put your face in the hood. And you have your friend blow the smoke up the sleeve. Yeah. I call them elephant hits. Hence the recurring, ah, uh, kiss uh, Lucy. So we started a band of our own, playing in our bedroom. Me and Norman. And John Berger, who's in the house tonight, our drummer, here for John Berger. One of the greatest drummers in the world, right in our house tonight. I'm honored as shit. Started a band of our own. Our first band. We were only 17. So we named the band Nitrous Oxide. Yeah! During Freebird, uh, the, the, we had a facsimile whip it on stage, and dry ice smoke would come out of the nozzle. Oh, yeah, we were hot. We opened up with Tie Your Mother Down by Queen. Yeah. Got sort of somber. <laughs> it, was, it was sad when Freddie Mercury died, I admit it. Passed away from AIDS. We all remember that very well in New York because they played uh, Queen songs on the radio. Any dial, 24-7 Queen songs. And MTV used to show music videos back then. No yeah, way. It was weird. <laughs> and they showed the Queen videos over and over and over and over, all three of them. <laughs> over and over and over. And they had that big AIDS benefit for Freddie Mercury where Axl Rose sat on Elton John's head and sang Eminem songs or some shit like that. <laughs> I'll tell you people, when that was going on, every night before going to sleep, I'm not a spiritual man per se, but I'd get on my knees and I would pray that nobody from Journey would die of AIDS. <laughs> it 
doesn't matter if KISS was the band that did it for you, but I know that there was a band, I know you people, you were out hearing live music, you filled the club hearing live music instead of all your other options. There was a band that let you know there was more to life than what was going on in your house. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Because they say that rock and roll is about sex. Yeah, that is. They say it's about drugs. Mm -hmm. But first you got to get out of the goddamn house, man. Rock and roll is about getting out of the house. Give yourselves a round of applause for getting out of the fucking house tonight. That's what it's all about, man. I remember growing up in the suburbs of New York. I would stand at the front door of our house on Cherry Lane, looking out into the night on a Friday or Saturday night through the front window like a dog looking through the deli window at meat. Looking out, looking down the gravel driveway for Norman to drive up in his green Volkswagen bug and get me out of the fucking house, you know? And I'd be like, come on, Norman, get me out of this house. And behind me, I'd hear my dad. Like all kids throughout history, he would ask that eternal question. Where are you going tonight? <laughs> and like all kids throughout history, you know what I'd say. I'd put on my best James Dean snarl and I'd say, no way. <laughs> what are you going to be doing out there? You know what I'd say. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. All kids throughout history, man. Jesus in the desert 2,000 years ago, looking through the flaps of the tent, waiting for Judas to drive up on his donkey. <laughs> so they could go into town and see the Pharisees play or some shit, right? Come on, Judas, get me out of this fucking tent. I can't take the pressure. My mom thinks I'm God. <laughs> Jewish boy. <laughs> Come on, Norman, get me out of this house, you know? And then I, I would see the last, the last pebble on the gravel driveway illuminate in Norman's headlights. Bam! I'm out the door, get into the passenger seat, roll up the windows, make it airtight. We'd like the first joint to the night and put Kit's Destroyer in the 8-track. <laughs> and pull out into the night, pull out into teenage liberation, saved by rock and roll, art, and really cool boots. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if it was Kiss, but I know that there was a band that let you know there was more to life than what was going on in your house. I'm gonna count to three. When I reach three, shout out the name of the band that did it for you. Shout it out loud. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah! I need to start a band called Because <laughs> everyone seems to be a huge fan of <laughs> I know that it was long ago Everybody's gone home Somewhere in time and space I'm on a rocket ride with me This is one of them. It's, uh, it's an autobiographical tune uh, about me in the West, the uh, Western. It's in the West in, in around 1883 uh, in a Western town, uh, and a zombie is coming down the main street of the town to kill me. True story. True story. True story. Uh, 
Um, they wanted to make it into a film, and I insisted only if it was a documentary. Um, <laughs> Blue, 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 Johnny. I heard talk on the vine. The whole was riding bullets. It made me suck the wine. I heard about a murder. And I prayed it wasn't mine. But here comes the Johnny. Coming on down the line. Transformation at midnight to chime. Life is not Prince Charming's ball, yeah. While you race for gold, fight growing old, and glorify ambition. I'll simplify and simply cry out. May all my sins be forgiven. Cause I am jealous of you Jealous of you I'm jealous of you Even though it's all unreal And I perform Cause I'd go crazy if I didn't You know what that's like not for the things that shine or the ones who coo. Hey, if this is a game, well, I sure hope I don't win it. Cause I have seen the things that winners have to do. 
And I don't want to be hard on guard Seeing stars, checking charts with bated heart Will it sell in Walmart? Oh, while you manipulate Congratulate yourself on being driven I'll contemplate, meditate on how I might be forgiven Cause I identify with you Identify with you Identify with you Even though it's all unreal I understand how you feel Oh, it looks like such a good, good deal I understand how you feel Was, but a couple of weeks ago, uh, oh, I know I was. Someone, I, I think it was, I think it was Ben. You had asked me, somebody, somebody was Facebooking or something, and asked me like, what was that? Oh, Dan, it was you, I think. Oh. What was that girl who? That you were like the girl who said, you know, you were like, it was 2005 on a Tuesday at 7:30. This girl with brown hair sang that song. Yeah. Do you remember who that was? <laughs> that's what made me do the calculation. Um, I don't have a calculator with me right now, but it was something like, I figured, usually on a Monday night, there's 50 people average signed up, each doing two songs. That's 100 songs uh, a week, just on the Mondays. Uh, after doing the calculations of just the amount of songs I heard live performed here on Mondays, oh, at this club, not the 10 years of anti-folk before Sidewa, uh, it came out to something like 87,300 songs. And then I figured, well, the first three years that I was at Sidewa, uh, I, uh, seven nights a week, I was the sound guy and, and did everything. So I was here every night for three years, and I figured uh, for six nights a week, there was at least four acts, each doing minimum of 10 songs. So if you count just my first three years of Sidewalk plus the Monday nights, it came out to over a quarter million songs that I heard performed live. And that's not counting the next 12 years that I was at Sidewalk. Uh, so no, Dan, I don't remember <laughs> who that fucking chick was. <laughs> I had trying on you. Which of the songs did you like the best? Of? What was the song I liked the best of? Uh, I don't have I don't have favorite any, anything's, but uh, I'll tell you this room is fucking jam packed with my favorite song right now. Yeah. Jeff Knox says hello. Oh hello, Jeff Knox. Good. Uh, <laughs> And I have, I have, uh, I always have music in my head. I don't know who else has this. I thought everybody in the world had this, and I found out a few years ago that everybody doesn't. So it was weird. Uh, to, I can't imagine what it's not like to always have music playing in your head. I wake up in the morning, there's a song in my dreams. Sometimes there's songs. Uh, and when I see uh, all my friends who are songwriters, uh, as they approach me, like a sort of like a Calder mobile, as they come into my field, their song starts playing. You know? Does that happen? Yeah, that happens to me. So there's being in this room the last couple of hours, there's so many. It's sort of like a form of synthesia where you taste the color, only I see faces and I hear their song. And uh, there's a lot of good songs in here. A lot of good songs in, in the thought balloons above people's heads right now that they've written. And uh, let's see. What can I do? It's a colored paper, old songs singing, girlish phrases, headaches filled with faded faces. But I'd like to look up and see you standing there. I'd love to cup your face in my hands. I wrote this song to help me to understand you won't be coming round in the world. I try to make old love's clothing fit upon your willing frame 
funny how each time it happens Love's never quite the same Given time may be our flower Would have found soft spaces shown But it got cut down in its finest hour By scissors, distrust at home I'd like to see how it looked Pressed and powdered in your memory book I wrote this song in a second it took To see you won't be coming round Hey, the world Freaking magnolias, lilacs, and imported seeds. Your sly face gleamed through the scented jungle of desire and steam. Already then it seemed like a distant, foggy Parisian dream. As we laughed, am I saying we got everything we need? But a plant life was not on my list of things. While yours became a wedding and tea and rings. I wonder if sickness could ever bring you coming out here once more. I thought this song would take some trimming, but it seems to have worked out okay. And sometimes you just have to look at life and life because of them the last four paragraphs. So see, you won't be coming round here no more. Brooks record. I, I, guess what I'm doing in Edinburgh? I'm running a club. How did that happen? <laughs> I'm running a club there and uh, we have a bunch of anti-folk in, in, uh, in the mix. And uh, you are totally in the mix there, Brooke. We play your stuff all the time. And uh, people really love it. And they come up to me and ask who it is, you know, like, can I buy it? And I say, sure, and I sell the buyer album. Um, <laughs> thanks, bro. I appreciate that. <laughs> so there's this, uh, there's a, uh, there was always this uh, pop, there's a pop scene in New York. Um, uh, that I've always been very jealous of and wanted to be in because they have cool 12-string Rickenbacker guitars in that scene and uh, they write amazing songs and um, so I sort of wrote this lick uh, to, to try to break into that scene um, and uh, uh, yeah, it didn't work uh, but uh, there's great songwriters in that scene uh, great bands people should check out. Uh, Richard X. Heyman, who's played here a lot, right? And uh, The Rooks, and uh, people like that. What about Dots Will Echo? And Dots Will Echo, yeah. Well, Dots Will Echo, they're like their own genre. We've been playing Dots Will Echo, uh, Rocket Girls. Is, 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 he, is Nick still here? There you go. Yeah, we play Rocket uh, Girls in the club all the time. Uh, anyway. Uh, imagine that someone who could really play a 12-string Rickenbacker guitar really well is doing this lick. Part of the part of this, you know, uh, can I just say one thing? Why am I asking you, Dad? 
Because you said dad to me earlier, is that it? Oh, okay. <laughs> See, that was part of, part of the thing here, is I think, you know, Ben, have you experienced this? Because you're a dad too. Do you experience that some of the people on the scene sort of project their father onto you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, just got to say this. <laughs> and they have all these issues with you, and you're like, I didn't do anything. I just booked you a gig, man. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that's like. <laughs> I just thought of a different song to do. This wasn't written for the pop guys. <laughs> I wish I had a TV dad who ate at home with me and mom. A dad with a job and time for me, like all the dads on my TV. I wish I had a TV dad who ruffled my hair and said, there, there, it'll be all right, as he fixed my bike. I wish I had a TV dad. We'd play catch in the backyard. Like all them dads on them Hallmark cards. I wish I had. A TV dad. I wish I had a TV dad. <laughs> Honey, I'm stoned. <laughs> I mean, I'm home. Took it home to your bedroom Pretty soon a cocoon And then a couple of months go by And a butterfly like a psychedelic balloon Is in your room Through the window they take a photo And then the next thing you know they Put you on the cover of Insect Weekly They say come on we'll make some money Grateful. You found some clay the other day. You took it home and you started to play. The thought of the future, you made a sculpture. You just like to play that way. The local press was so impressed. They called you the next Henry Moore. And what's more, they wanted more and more than that.
bubble gum. The sun is out, honey, I want some. And it's not hard, not hard to reach. We can hitch a ride to Rockaway Beach, go. Rock, rock, Rockaway Beach, yeah. Rock, rock, Rockaway Beach, yeah. Rock, rock, Rockaway Beach. We can hitch a ride to Rockaway Beach, yeah. It's not hard, not hard to reach. We can get you right. 